Welcome back to Throwback Thursday. We hope you enjoyed our first video and thank you so much for joining us again. In this new NC Learn at Home video, we're going to take a look at more of what you'll find on the first floor of the North Carolina State Capitol. So all through the first floor of the Capitol building, we have a collection of plaques and mugs that uh, are meant to commemorate different moments in North Carolina's history, moments or individuals that are important to our state's history. And actually, the most recent plaques that were added to the Capitol um, in 2010 are these amendment plaques here in the West Hall on the first floor. So these are plaques that commemorate amendments to the United States Constitution. An amendment is a change. To amend something means to change it. Um, and many people don't realize that the Constitution is our governing document as a country, but it's also a living document. We have made multiple changes, many changes, to this document over time. The original changes were actually called the Bill of Rights, and those are the original 10 amendments to the U.S. Constitution. So these amendment plaques are meant to represent citizenship amendments to the Constitution. So one of the nicknames for the North Carolina State Capitol is the People's House. You'll often hear this reference, right? Um, what that means is the people of North Carolina elected individuals to come here and serve in this Capitol building, whether that be as governor um, or as members of our General Assembly, right? When this building opened in 1840, it was a very narrow definition of people that were voting, that were allowed to hold public office. So think about how that definition how the people has changed over time, right? So when this building opened, it was white men that were serving here. Um, these men were the ones voting for other white men. Um, they were landed, so they owned property, um, and most often they were very wealthy individuals. And so these were the men that were controlling our state's government at the time, right? Over time, amendments have been passed to the U.S. Constitution guaranteeing citizenship rights for other individuals who weren't landed white men, right? So following the Civil War, there were actually three amendments passed, um, and we call them the Reconstruction Amendment. So they're commemorated here on these first three plaques. They recognize the 13th, the 14th, and the 15th Amendments to the U.S. Constitution. So we'll start here with the 13th Amendment. The 13th Amendment freed previously enslaved individuals in the United States. So this was, again, following the Civil War, following the emancipation of enslaved people. This amendment was passed, and it says, neither slavery nor involuntary servitude, except as punishment for crime, whereof the party shall have been duly convicted shall exist within the United States or any place subject to their jurisdiction. So this is basically outlawing enslavement in the United States, right? Um, and it was passed, it was ratified in 1865. So in order for an amendment to be passed and added to the U.S. Constitution, a certain amount of states have to sign off on it. And actually, North Carolina, as part of the states that seceded uh, from the United States during the Civil War, they had to pass these Reconstruction Amendments in order to be readmitted to the Union fully. So North Carolina passed this amendment, freeing enslaved people, right? Then this 14th Amendment was passed in 1868, and this amendment says that previously enslaved individuals should be uh, included as citizens, and it basically outlines what um, a citizen looked like, right? All, por all persons born or naturalized in the United States um, are considered citizens, right? And then the 15th Amendment here guaranteed that the citizens of the United States should not be denied the right to vote based on race, color, or previous condition of servitude. So this is basically guaranteeing universal manhood suffrage in the United States and in North Carolina. 
So during that Reconstruction period, we had black men serving here in our state's legislature in great numbers. Um, you know, over a hundred served here in our General Assembly. And they were guaranteed that right to vote and that right to service with the passage of these amendments. But basically, the states were always allowed to decide what this passage looked like, right? So almost immediately following the passage of these amendments, um, the states started setting up systems of laws. Um, and these laws were basically meant to disenfranchise African Americans and put them back um, into that subjugated position that you saw them in uh, before the Civil War. So these amendments, though they were passed with the intention of expanding citizenship rights for specific individuals, um, they did not guarantee citizenship for all, right? Other minority groups, notably American Indians, were left out of these conversations. And immediately following the passage of the Reconstruction Amendments, states started putting together, again, these codified systems uh, of laws meant to disenfranchise African American men. So by the turn of the 20th century, African American men had been effectively banned from serving, from voting uh, in North Carolina. The last amendment as part of the, that, are, that is part of these citizenship amendments would be the 19th Amendment here. So the 19th Amendment actually guarantees the right to vote um, could not be denied based on account of sex, right? Because this 15th Amendment said that the right to vote could not be denied based on race, color, or previous condition of servitude. So there was no stipulation that women were included uh, in enfranchisement here. So it was necessary to pass the 19th Amendment guaranteeing women the right to vote and hold public office in 1920. Now this amendment again did not mean that all women could vote. In the southern states that were already passing those laws meant to disenfranchise African Americans, it was only white women that were guaranteed the right to vote and hold public office with this amendment. Also notably, North Carolina did not ratify this amendment as part of the three quarters of states necessary. Um, we did not ratify this amendment until 1971. So usually what happens is after an amendment is federally ratified, federal law supersedes state law. Other states who weren't part of the majority kind of jump on board and they uh, ceremonially ratify the amendment. But North Carolina kind of delayed that vote, and we were the second to last state uh, to ratify the 19th Amendment. Uh, it didn't matter, women could vote and hold public office uh, nationally beginning in 1920, and North Carolina actually became the first state to elect, uh, the first southern state rather, to elect a woman to serve in our General Assembly. Thanks again for joining us for another episode of Learn at Home with NC Historic Sites. We look forward to having you back at the Capitol again soon. You can always learn more about the Capitol by visiting our website at historicsites.nc.gov backslash capital or at NC State Capitol on all social media platforms.